I said multiply by two. I'm sorry, it's divided by two. Yeah. It's not multiply by two. It's the in electrons and bonds. I mean, yeah. When you see, you you see the structure, four bonds. So it is what eight electrons. Oh, okay, okay. And I said, listen, listen. I said you can you can do it by two ways. Either electrons multiply. Uh, sorry, divided by two. يعني اللي هو 4 okay 8 uh, divided by 2 so 4 or either directly the bonds 4 and it is easier to get the dots plus the bonds okay sorry now for the reason us okay what is the reason reasons <laughs> reasons So it is a changing in the electrons around the bonds. Okay. We'll do an example, uh, example which is the carbonate ion, CO3 minus 2. Great. So we have here the carbon atom. Okay. We said the carbon atom, how many bonds it can make? This is the first oxygen, the second oxygen, and the third oxygen. Okay, we still need a, a fourth bond, right? Yes. So we'll do here a double bond, okay? And now let's complete the electrons around each oxygen. Here, how many electrons around uh, this oxygen to be stable? Six. Here. Here. Sorry. Now for, uh, the, for drawing the structures, you have here first the double bond, okay? We can move this double bond here and take these two, two electrons here, okay? So it will be the same, but here the double bond, we move the double bond, we are just playing with the electrons, okay? Okay. The third structure, move this here and move this here. So we are moving what? Okay. You got it? Unshared electrons, the dots. Four. 
plus how many bonds? Two. So it will be zero. Now let's talk about carbon number two and carbon number three. I will make them uh, in one formula because they are the same. Six valence electrons minus six plus, uh, sorry, plus, plus. How many bonds? One. So it will be. Sorry? Yeah, negative one. Okay, so negative one from here and negative one from here. The formal charge for the whole structure is negative two. Yeah, I mean. هلا الكربون لما عملتي لها بوند مع 3 اكسجينز عملتي اناذر بوند حتى الكربون سي ستيبل خلص تمام فالكربون زيرو فورمال شارج طيب عندك وحده من الاكسجينز عملت تو بوند ستيبل زيرو شارج عندك اذر تو اكسجين يا اذر تو اكسجينز عملوا وان بوند وان بوند اوكي فالفورمال شارج شو صارت تبع كل وحده ماينس 1 ماينس 1 فصار ماينس 2 لكل الستراكشر تمام جاتت الفورمال شارج كلكم اكيد Will we structure still? I'm going to ask you a question. 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 Okay, so as I said, I want to be this and not the resonance we are playing with the electrons. Okay, as you can see here, uh, we have the resonance hybrid. Uh, the electrons we can like draw them as dot, yeah, they are moving around the atoms, they are moving around the atoms. Okay. If we have time, we will draw another structure so you get the idea of you. Okay, now for the arrow, uh, you won't have any question about this, yani, but you should know that the curved arrow, as I used here, will structures to move uh, the electrons that are moving, and uh, the fish hook arrows are about the radicals, like about here, as you can see, uh, the uh, bone between two carbons, it is, we cut it, and we have these uh, radicals. Okay, now the straight arrow, it is عادي يعني from the uh, uh, sorry between the reactants and the products, okay? And the double head arrow it, it means uh, reversible. Oh yeah, this one. Oh. But the CH3 wasn't the reactant, here it's the reactant. Sure. As you can see here, this is CH. When I say CH3, it's like just a molecule, okay? But here, this is a methyl radical. As you can see, because there is an unshared uh, electron. That's what I said. When you say CH3, it's like the molecule itself. Yes. And the branch. When it's called a branch, I mean, when it's called a branch. Yeah. Yeah. When it's called a branch, it's called a radical, right? No, but it's as a form of itself. Oh, alone. Yeah, alone radical. Alone radical. But when it's called a branch, it's called a radical. Yeah, of course. As alone, it's a radical. Okay, so the okay, so for sigma bonds, uh, do you know what is a sigma bond? Yes, it is the bond between uh, the two. Uh, uh, it is the bond that uh, forms in the internuclear axis. Okay, so it is between the two atoms. And uh, it, uh, what are the sigma bonds? Uh, it can be between an S and S subshells or P P or S and P. Okay. Uh, and it, uh, what what is a pi orbital? Yes, yes, exactly. It is uh, in the uh, it is like uh, on either side of the axis. Okay, now for the vascular model, this is very very important. You need to memorize uh, these uh, molecules. You need to memorize the ang bond angles because many examples will come. So uh, as you can see, if if an atom is bonded to two other atoms, it will be yes linear. Or if it has two uh, two electron pairs, two non-electron pairs, uh, pairs, and it is not bonded to any atoms, 
it, is, it will also be linear. Uh, if we have a triagonal planner, the atom will either be bonded to three atoms or it can have three electron pairs. Okay? And for the bent atom, this one, uh, the atom is uh, bonded to two atoms and it has one electron pair. Uh, the bond angle is less than 120. These uh, angles you need to memorize. And uh, for the tetrahedral, which is, uh, what is an example of a tetrahedral? Yes. CH4. So uh, most uh, alkanes or uh, the uh, bond angles in alkanes form a tetrahedral. And you need to know the angle is 109.5. For the triagonal pyramidal, there is an atom which is bonded to three other atoms, and then we have a long pair of electrons. Triagonal pyramidal, yeah, it will be polar because there is uh, an unshared uh, pair of electrons. So, uh, what can you say for this one? What is the shape? Triagonal. Yes, it will be triagonal pyramidal. And what for this? Yes, it will be a bed. Because it is bonded to two atoms, and it has how many uh, electron pairs? Two. Okay, uh, now for the carbon sp3 hybrid, uh, hybrid orbitals, as you know, the carbon, uh, it is bonded to how many atoms? Four. So we need four equivalent bonds, okay? So that's why we have the balance bond theory in which the uh, 2s and 2p, the last uh, subshells of the carbon atom, uh, will form like a hybrid to form four, bond, uh, four sp3 bonds, okay? Uh, so I, as you can see, this is also an important uh, one to know. These are all the hi uh, hybrids. As you can see, sp3 uh, forms four bonds, uh, which forms also a tetrahedral. Uh, the triagonal planar forms an sp2, uh, which forms three bonds. How do you know like uh, if it uh, forms a three bonds? You can count s is like one s and p2. So one plus two is three. So three bonds here. One plus three is four, uh, four, so four bonds. Here, one plus one is uh, one, so two bonds. And the two bonds will form what? A linear shape. So uh, when do we have like uh, two bonds? When we when binding two, two bonds? It is usually like if we have a triple bond, so the last one will have like uh, just a single bond. So this is an, an example of an SP, where, we ha where it is binded to two, uh, to two another atoms, okay? Uh, here, this is an example of uh, an sp2. As you can see, we have a double bond, and uh, in the uh, in the sp3 we have uh, four single bonds. As you can see, so this c is binded to three uh, four other atoms, the three h and the another carbon atom. Okay, so this will also, uh, yeah, um, this is also is not important, but. Just know the difference because uh, you will يعني, you will take it later. So this is the ballistic model. This is what what is the model called? Space filling. Yeah, space filling, and this is the electrostatic potential. Okay, so um, classification according to molecular framework. You don't have to memorize any examples. So uh, the uh, acyclic compounds are what? Yeah, they don't form any cycles. So this is an example of uh, acyclic uh, compounds. And then we have uh, two cyclic uh, compounds. They can be either uh, heterocyclic or carbocyclic. What is, what is the difference between carbocyclic and heterocyclic? Yeah, carbo uh, carbocyclic, the cycle um, all contains carbon. It doesn't matter يعني, if uh, the outside of the cycle is uh, not carbon. I have she in you know, the cycle itself contains all carbon. This is called the carbocyclic. Okay? And for the heterocycle, the cycle itself contains uh, um, an atom that is not a carbon atom. 
So this is a heterocycle. Okay? I do not have to memorize any examples from here. Now, classifications according to function groups. This is also very important. You have to memorize the structure and the class of compound, but you don't have to memorize any examples from here. As you, see, as you saw, yeah, at the right of the table, there was many examples. Yeah, you don't have to memorize them. Okay? And at least one question will come in the quiz. So just be prepared. So for chapter two, yeah, it will come. Uh, now starting with alkanes. So uh, what is alkanes? Saturated hydrocarbons. Yes, and what do you mean by saturated? Single yes, all single bonds. Uh, and what is the generic formula of alkanes? Do you know? Yes, yes exactly. And uh, we said that uh, the saturated uh, carbon, which has four single bonds, will form which uh, hybrid? SP3. Yes, it will have sp3. And sp3, what is the shape of the sp3? Tetrahedral. And what is the bond angle of tetrahedral? Yes, exactly. So, uh, and uh, uh, this is what you mentioned about the N alkanes. Any unbranched alkanes that we don't have uh, any branch, uh, we call it natural alkanes. Okay? And uh, this is very important. Uh, someone asked about the structural isomers. How do we know them? You need to memorize these examples, these structural isomers, how many numbers of structural isomers. So, as you can see, met uh, methane only has one structural isomer. Ethan, how many? One. One. Propan? One. one. Butan? Two. two. Uh, Pentan? So five and nine. So um, this one, if it didn't come in the quiz, it will come in the midterm, so you have to memorize. Okay? Uh, what is a methylene group? Yeah, CH2. It's like the difference between each uh, uh, between each ascending alkane. So we have methane, ethane, and uh, you know that you have to memorize the prefix, right? Okay, and uh, what is a homologous series? Um, it is, uh, they differ by regular length of structure. So alkanes are a homologous series, and they, they differ by what? Methylene, which is a CH2. Understood? Now, uh, for the IUPAC. Okay. For the IUPAC name or nomenclature, uh, the root name is for the what? For the longest uh, continuous chain. Like as you can see here, th those are examples from your book. Uh, uh, here you have five carbons. Here, why can't we take, like, listen, one, two, three, four, five, and we can take also one, two, three, four, five. So both are the same. Uh, but if we put another carbon here, can we take it like this? No. no. Why? Because the longest chain. Exactly, the longest chain. Okay. And the substituents are called alkyl groups. Uh, like, as you can see here, uh, the methane, it's CH4. Uh, and a methyl group, which is the CH3, as a branch here, okay? Okay. Uh, now, if we have two or more identical groups are attached, when we want to name, di is having two, two. two. tri, three. tetra, four. four. Okay. Okay. Uh, who can name this for me, please? Yeah, you. Yeah. Um, sorry, Exactly, perfect. Okay, yeah, now for this. Uh, I know here you, you have already the answer. It's 2.2 uh, two, uh, two dimethyl benzene. Uh, now I want someone to name this for me from here. Uh, it is actually the same, I think. Yeah, and. This here, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So two me uh, two methyl butane. Uh, okay. Now for this. How is the same? 
You can say this and you can. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, the second word the same. I'm saying about this. Okay. For this group. Yeah, go ahead. Roman. Exactly. We took, uh, we took the longest chain, three carbons. So it's two, two, uh, methyl, problem. Sorry? Tetra, a butane? No, it's like you need to take the longest chain. It's not, I mean, like listen, tetra, uh, tetra butane, if this carbon, okay, is attached to another carbon and like, Longest chain, yeah, you can't take it as as, uh, as a substituent. But here you have, this is the longest chain. Yani, I mean, uh, in tetrabutane, it's four carbons. All of them are a substituent, right? That's what I mean. I'll come to this. Okay, uh, when we have two carbon, it will be a thin group. When we have three, it will be a proper group. But the proper group, three carbons, and it makes a bond with which carbon? On the side, the peripheral, car uh, peripheral carbon, right? And if we took it from the middle carbon, what do we call it? Isopropyl. Isopropyl. I mean the substituents, uh, the bond, if it is from the uh, middle carbon, it will be isopropyl, uh, or if it is uh, from the side, it will be propyl group. Okay, 
هلا the first one isobutyl chloride for the isobutyl chloride anyone can draw it يعني فهل إنه هم draw it isobutyl chloride Isobutyl chloride. The first one, the first one. I'm solving the questions in the book. I will do two only, and you do the rest. No, we don't have time. Hello, guys. Yeah. Isobutyl chloride. And we can name it in two ways, by the way. But draw it as isobutyl chloride. You can use this if you want. Look at this. This is the isobutyl. Mm -hmm. We said isobutyl chloride. Yeah. Right. Okay. So for the isobutyl, thank you. Mm -hmm. So for the isobutyl chloride, you can name it in another way. Like let's say here one, two, three. So it will be one chloro, two methyl proban. Okay, but here in the book, they consider this as it is the main one, chloride, okay? And this, all of it is isobutyl chloride, okay. Got it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Isopropyl bromide. No, it's easy. Isopropyl bromide. Yeah, yeah. By the way, this... Remind me at the end of the lecture, I want to correct something. I said it wrong at the beginning. I'm so sorry, okay? okay. Isopropyl bromide, and you can use this slide. Isopropyl bromide. Okay, okay, okay. Hello, <laughs> this one is what? You can see it. One bromo, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, bromo, broban, okay? Bromo, broban, tamam? But here, added in the, like, added the substituents from which carbon? The side one. So this is propyl bromide. And if you take it from the middle carbon, it will be isopropyl bromide. That's it? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. The last one, I will do it. Third beauty, iodide. Third, you know what? When, I, uh, when they give you a name and say, Yalla, draw the structure, start from the end to the beginning. Okay? So, third protein, uh, iodide, you will draw the, uh, the iodide. Okay? Then, what is the third protein from the previous slide? This one. Carbon, huh? Carbon. Carbon, carbon. Okay? I think you can do the rest of them. Yeah, they are the same. Okay. Okay, so this is also very important. There are three types of intermolecular forces. Okay, what are intermolecular forces? Yes, forces between molecules. And um, hydrogen bonding. Do you know what is hydrogen bonding? Yes, uh, between O uh, and H, F and H, or N and H. Uh, we also have dipole-dipole bonding, in which there is no H, but there is like uh, uh, two, uh, two, two differences in electronegativities, but they are between two different molecules. So as you can see, this is an example, uh, the carbon and uh, oxygen. They are from different molecules, but they have dipole-dipole bonds. Why did we say they are hydrogen bonds? 
There is no hydrogen, exactly. And Van der Waals or London dispersion forces, they are uh, between, uh, mostly between non-polar molecules. So, uh, it, and it is uh, caused by the movement of electrons. So, uh, when matter, uh, one uh, temporary dipole in which all of the electrons at one moment uh, goes to this place. So there will be like a temporary dipole. Uh, this temporary dipole will induce uh, another dipole on another molecule. So this is the partial positive charge will induce, uh, will uh, attract the electrons from the another molecule. So this is the van der Waals forces. So uh, this is important to know uh, the alkane properties. Uh, this slide is very important because uh, it gives you all of the properties of alkanes. Uh, first of all, uh, are alkanes polar or non-polar? Non-polar. Uh, and do you know why? Because carbon Yeah, because uh, all of the bonds are carbon and hydrogen, and carbon and hydrogen bonds are non-polar. So non-polar uh, molecules, uh, do they dissolve in water? No. No, because water is polar or non-polar? And like dissolves like, right? So uh, it is insoluble in water. Uh, and uh, this is because alkanes cannot replace the hydrogen bonding among water molecules with attractive alkane water molecules. So the hydrogen bonding between the water molecules, with, uh, it is so strong that the alkanes cannot, um, cannot make like uh, uh, an attractive force that is strong enough to break the hydrogen bonding. Because hydrogen bonding is the strongest electric, uh, uh, the strongest intermolecular force. Okay, uh, so uh, we we know that alkanes have lower and lo uh, lower boiling and melting point. Do you know why? They are lower. Uh, they have lower boiling and uh, melting point than uh, many other compounds, organic compounds. Yes, because they are non-polar. And uh, there are no hydrogen bonds. There are no dipole-dipole bonds. So uh, the, uh, the only bonds that are uh, intermolecular bonds are van der Waals forces, which is very weak and can be uh, can break easily. Tamam? Now the boiling points of alkanes rise as the chain length increase. So uh, if we go from propane to butane, will the uh, will the boiling point increase or decrease? Increase and uh, it falls as we uh, as it becomes more branched and nearly spherical in shape. So if we have um, as uh, if we have for example a butane, one, two, three, four, and then we have a propane, methyl propane, which has a lower boiling point, up or down? Lower boiling point, down. Yes, exactly. Why? Because it's more branched. And van der Waals forces like more surface area. And, uh, if we have less branching, we have more surface area, and then uh, we will have. Uh, so more branch, less uh, Yeah, more branch, uh, more branch. Same car, uh, same number of carbon atoms uh, equals uh, less uh, less boiling point. So uh, for naming cycloalkanes, we have uh, we just count the number of carbons and then add like a cyclo uh, before it. So if we have one, two, three, four, what do we call this? Cyclobutane. If we have six carbon atoms, cyclohexane. Exactly. Uh, now uh, if we if we add a methyl group, okay, uh, what do we call it? Methyl, uh, yes, methyl cyclo, uh, and this is five carbon atoms. Yes, methyl cyclopentane. Okay, now if we have two branches, for this, yes, we start uh, we start from one of them if they are close to each other, and then we say one two, uh, dimethyl cyclopentane. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, for conformations of alkane, uh, is this hard for you or? Hard. Okay. So, uh, what are conformers? You don't know? They are stereoisomers in which they have the same connectivity, same structural isomers, but they are uh, 
they have different spatial arrangements. Okay, so they have the spa same connectivity of bonds, but in the uh, spatial arrangement, in the in real life, they uh, uh, they have different arrangements. Okay, so for we we have staggered and eclipsed. Staggered uh, has higher energy and more steric interactions. So what are staggered? Uh, Uh, yeah, yeah, it should be the opposite. Yeah, so staggered uh, have lower energy. So um, from here, as you can see, these uh, groups are farthest away from each other. Unlike eclipse, in which they have higher energy and more steric interaction because the groups are uh, closer to each other. Okay, so uh, what do you need to know from this is that uh, just know the uh, dash ridges. So this is the staggered. Uh, uh, the dash means that it is in, uh, to the inside, okay? And uh, the uh, solid wedge uh, is coming outside. And for the sawhorse, uh, as you can see, uh, the, uh, this bond is dissecting the two bonds in here. This is the stagger. And in the new map, we have a circle, uh, which represents the carbon that is uh, behind. And uh, we have this uh, dot uh, in the middle, which represents the carbon that is, yeah, that is in front. So this is the new man. And as you can see, this is for the eclipse. Uh, the uh, groups are closer to each other. And here, the same thing. They are aligned. And here also, they are aligned. So uh, how can we go from the stagger to the eclipse? Yeah, what is the bond angle that we should turn it? Yeah, sit 60 degrees. So, uh, which has uh, higher potential energy, staggered or eclipsed? Okay, eclipsed. Okay, you know that um, uh, the atoms. Uh, the atoms that are close to each other, they want to repel. So this is potential energy. They, uh, the amount of uh, energy uh, uh, they want to keep them close to, uh, to each other. Because they want to repel each other, but we need some energy to keep them close to each other. This is the energy, or steric energy. Okay? For cyclopropan, uh, uh, what is the conformation shape of it? It is a planar shape, okay? So a cyclopropan is the only shape that is planar. Uh, and as you can see, the bond angles between them are 60 degrees. So, uh, uh, so they are 60 degrees. Ideally, in an, uh, in an unbranched or linear uh, alkane, we know the bond angle is what? 109.5, yes, صح? so 60 degrees is much, much smaller, right? So that's why it is less stable than a linear propane, okay? Uh, for cyclobutane or cyclopentane, they have a puckered conformation, so they are not linear, right? So uh, as you can see here, the cyclobutane and cyclopentane, Although, as you can see, uh, their, uh, uh, their uh, bond angle is less, but uh, they have the, uh, the, ato uh, the atoms, they are farthest away from each other, okay? So we have less strain energy because the atoms are what? Further away from each other. Now we have the cyclohexane. We have either a chair or both conformation, right? So, uh, chair conformation, the bond angle is 109.5, which is the most stable thing. Uh, and as you can see, the, um, we have equilateral and we have axial. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, sorry. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. It's okay. Uh, so, we have equilateral and axial. So, uh, equilateral line within the axis of the chair, and axial, they are what? Perpendicular. Okay? So we, as you can see here, we have how many equilateral? Six. 
Six. And how many axial pointing up? Three. Axial. And how many uh, axial pointing down? Uh, three. So this uh, conformation, they can also flip to another conformation in which the equilateral becomes an axial, and the axial becomes what? Quarter. Okay, now for this is trans isomerism uh, for uh, cyclo uh, for cycloalkanes. As you can see here, the trans in which they have uh, the the, uh, the groups are pointing in opposite directions. Okay, so one of them is uh, pointing inside or uh, outside, and the, or we can have it here like this, in which one is up and the other down. And uh, for the cis, we have they are both pointing at the same direction. So we can have it like this, or we can have it there, either pointing both up or both down. Okay. Uh, now for this lesson, you can just like skip the paragraph and memorize this, okay? The isomers, we have two types. A different bond pattern and simple uh, bond pattern. The different bond pattern, uh, structure, uh, structural isomers. So they will have the same, Molecular formula, exactly. And different structural formula. Now, when we have the same bond pattern, they will have both? Same. Same, okay. The stereoisomers, we have two types. Interconvertible by single bond rotation. Uh, conformers, uh, okay, and we have the not, sorry, the not interconvertible by bond rotation, which is the conf uh, configurational isomers. Who can give me example of this one? Like not changing in the bond. Any? So, yani, ligat al atra. Cis and trans. Okay. And the one that are confirmers, uh, like we can't change in the bond, so it is flips and standard. Okay. Uh, the last is we are done. Okay. So, uh, what is an oxidation state? You took this, right? Uh, so uh, here we want to find out the oxidation state of a carbon atom. Uh, as you can see, uh, the uh, carbon if the carbon atom is bonded to another carbon atom, uh, this carbon atom we count it as zero. Uh, if it is bound to a hydrogen atom, we uh, we count it as positive one. And uh, each uh, other atom that is more electronegative than uh, the carbon atom, we count it as negative one. So the oxidation state is what? Negative, uh, everything uh, from here. So for example, this carbon atom is bonded, to, uh, uh, is bonded to oxygen, right? Oxygen is what? More electronegative. So we count it as what? Negative uh, one. So how many, uh, how many bonds we have with this oxygen? Two. So uh, negative one, negative one, and then this one? Negative one, and this one? Negative one, okay? So negative one plus negative one plus negative one plus negative one, which is negative four, and then we multiply it by negative one gives us positive four. Understood? Uh, so same thing for here. For example, this one, carbon is bonded to four hydrogen atoms, right? Um, so we have positive uh, one plus positive one plus positive one plus positive one gives us. And then we multiply it by negative one gives us the negative four. So the more positive uh, oxidation state will be more uh, uh, more oxidative, and the more uh, and the more negative will be uh, the uh, will have like a less oxidative state. Okay, now here for combustion reaction, uh, you saw in the book that there are many examples of partial combustion reaction. I don't think that it will come in the quiz. Uh, so, uh, if something comes, memorize this one, this reaction. So, if we have methane and methane, you don't take it? Okay, I'll skip. Hey, this one is Okay, so we're going to have a good one. I had to, uh, no, no, at the end of the chapter. At the end of the chapter, I said this for who came first. Uh, at the end of the chapter, you will have last uh, page. It will be summarized, and it will summarize all the reactions, okay? So it will help you by then in other chapters. 
اوكي نعم موف باستر حتى خلاص يعني الريبورت يستغلوا ناو ذات ناو ذا هالوجينيشن اوف الكانس سوري سوري Now the chlorination, uh, the chlorination of hydrocarbons is actually a substitutional uh, reaction. Yani, you have now R, uh, this is the general formula, okay? RH plus X2 with heat and with light, it will be converted to RX plus HX. It's easy. Like now you have here Br2, RH, you will break this bond, give one Br to the R and give the other H to the Br. So we will have HBr and RBr. Okay, this is what we call it, bro, domination. Okay, and with the chlor, Okay, and we have uh, for the monochlorination uh, and for the dichlorination and trichlorination, it is like monochlorination chlor adding one chlor, di, two, tri. Okay, yeah, yani, I mean like for example here, here you can have methane adding one chlor, mono. Adding directly two chlor, di, three chlors, try, four chlors. Okay, so this is, uh, I think, the last uh, lesson free radical chain mechanism of halogenation. Uh, you took this one, right? Okay, so we have first of all uh, initiation, forming what? Two radicals. And then we have propagation, in which uh, the halide free uh, radical reacts with the hydrocarbon, as you can see there. And uh, it extracts one H, uh, generating uh, the C radical, and uh, then adding a halide atom. So as you can see here, this is the radical, in which it has uh, uh, an odd number of uh, unshared electrons. And then, uh, in termination, this is when we uh, like uh, uh, take up all the radicals, free radicals, and uh, forming uh, the molecules. So the two chloride molecules forms uh, two the, the two chloride uh, radicals form the chlorine molecules. The two R radicals form the which are the alkanes, I mean, form R and R bond. And then this uh, uh, R radical with the Cl form the uh, chloro. Also here, uh, this is the stability of the radicals. So if we have uh, this one, the carbon which is which has the radical that is bonded to three other carbons, this is called tertiary, and this is the most stable radical. And as you can see, if we decrease the number of uh, less carbons, if we decrease the number of carbons, uh, will decrease the stability. Okay, so, uh, now this is okay for the radicals. So when your friends said C 